You're listening to episode 113 of the Super League Pod, coming up on your favourite Rugby League podcast. We've got all your feedback and shout-outs, news from around the world of Rugby League. We'll be looking back at a thrilling weekend's action in the Super League and Middle Eights, as well as previewing all next weekend's upcoming action. All that and more on your podcast, the Super League Pod. Okay, hello everyone, welcome to the Super League pod. Mark Illingworth joins me as always and he's sort of grinning at me across the table because he knows it's taken me three goes to nail the introduction this week, which again is a bit of a bit of a poor start really, but we were both slightly distracted by the Olympic gymnastics, aren't we? You, particularly this week mate, have caught Olympic fever, haven't you? Oh yeah, I watched every one of Every one of the medals that we won this weekend, so Saturday and Sunday, live. Wow. <laughs> See, this Which is... meant I didn't, get, I didn't get too many early nights. Just for clarity's sake, Mark is the one of us that doesn't have children, so yeah. that could go some way to explaining why you were able to do that. But yeah, uh, yeah Olympic fever, and we've got the, uh, we've got the ladies' gymnastics I needed something to get over the rugby there. league, to be honest. So, uh... Yeah, true, true. So apart from that, how's your week been? Has it just been vegging out in front of the TV and watching the Olympics? Or has there been more to it than that? A little bit more to it than yeah. that. Um, been picking up the running again ahead of uh, doing 10Ks at the end of the summer. Mm. Um, and me and the wife went out for a walk yesterday afternoon. How lovely. Where did you go? We went to, you know, um, Jumbles Country Park and Reservoir. I do not. Where's right. that? It's near Bolton, okay. um, basically. Between Bolton and Blackburn, we went we went round there. Is it up that big hill? No, it's the back side of Winter Hill. All right, it's behind okay. Winter Hill. I've never seen the back of Winter Hill before. I've never been round the back of Winter Hill before. Right. Where's that place up in Bolton where couples of broad tastes in the boudoir gather? To enjoy Why are you talking around it? Well, you I'm mean, sh- is there a dog in hill? I'm sure I heard that there was a dog in hill around Bolton and I was trying to get to whether or not that was where you had ever ended up. But right, well, to do was... it delicately, because I'm sure, or I assume, that that's not something you're into. It could well be. It's, it's not, but I don't know where... Well, I wouldn't even know where it was, but it was daylight, so did, did, did they dog in daylight? Daylight doggery? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just it, it it occurred to me. Fair enough. Well, we'll move swiftly on because this what is about the, you? What's this your is the part of show that your Emma listens to. I certainly don't. What's want to your week her. been like? My weekend has been fantastic. Thank you very much for asking. Um, Erin's been with me this weekend, so we took a trip over to God's Own County, West Yorkshire, to visit my grandparents, her great grandparents. Um, who she and my grandma, I think I might have mentioned this before, absolutely adore each other. They're just like the best of mates. And and bless her heart, my grandma has sort of, I would say she's in the middle stages of um, dementia and Alzheimer's. So she's, she's lucid and she'll talk to you, but her short-term memory is pretty terrible. And whilst all of her family kind of just, you know, ignore certain parts of what she says when she repeats herself and things like that, Erin doesn't have that filter, so she'll say the same thing to Erin a couple of times, and Erin's looking up, I know, Grandma, you've said that, and she just sort of laughs it off, but it's really quite sweet to see them interact, so that was that was Saturday, and that was lovely, and then on Sunday... I saw the, um... The Five Generations. So your sister was there as my, well. Yeah, my sister and my mum as well, so there was four of us in a car, I'm not going to talk about that part of the journey, because to be honest, Mark, it was flipping horrific. Um... <laughs> So there was, yeah, there was, so there was five generations, my grandma down to, or four, grandma, four generations, I should say, yeah. uh, with my granddad loitering in the background. I had said to him, right, granddad, I want to get a picture of my grandma, my mum, my sister and Erin, um, to get the four, the four generations of, you know, the different women in my family. And I went, oh, all right, son, no problem. And then just stood in the background like a ghostly figure. <laughs> Bless him. I, was like, I didn't wonder what he was up to. I didn't have the heart to go, granddad, get out of the way. So I just had to kind of cope with it. But yeah, so that was lovely. And then on Sunday, it was the 40s weekend in, or it had been the 40s weekend in Lytham. So we took a trip yeah, the, the green yeah. and saw all the, all the restored um, army vehicles from the Second World War and all the people dressed up in kind of vintage 
uh, clothing and yeah. stuff and Aaron got really into it and she had a look at the helicopter that was there and the, and the Spitfire that had been restored it was fantastic really interesting stuff and uh, and then we went to the park and that was that was about it really very wholesome family stuff so consequently I'm feeling pretty good on Monday night I don't have a hangover I've been living healthily on vegetables and, and lean meat so my electrolytes and all that lot are in are in great condition I'm feeling pretty good ahead of the podcast sir Fair enough, I'm the opposite end of things, I'm <laughs> fucking nothing. But we'll get we'll, well get let's see what show. that does to the dynamic of the show. Who's been getting in touch with us this week then? Um, Colin Render, uh, he, he got in touch, he said, got a tweet of the week on Super League Pod, always a good listen. Glad they brought up It's OK to Talk, Andy's Man Club. Yes. Well, thank you for getting in touch, Carl. Yeah. Um, another thing Colin got in touch with, actually, on the sort of theme of It's, it's OK to Talk, mm. was um, the Zach Hardacre piece that's been... Yeah. the papers in Australia in the last couple of days yeah. um, obviously that was Zach talking about some of the tough times he's been through so it's worth a read for anyone I would yeah. suggest I did clock onto that today very very brave of the young man well done to him uh, Paul Campbell he said a, a great way to start the day is listening to Super League Pod hashtag hate the new job lots of grimacy faces oh dear Paul I'm sure it'll come good for the lad what's he started do you know, do you know what he's doing for a living has he moved? Yeah, I think he's, I assume he's moved. I'm not entirely sure, because he was working for Transport for London, wasn't he? That's that's gone. Isn't yeah. that? I don't think he's doing, working for them anymore. No. Because uh, I think he's moved. Oh, of course, he's moved to Shottingham, hasn't he? Yeah, we think. We, I'm yeah. sure he'll fill us in. On yeah, what do you do and where do you live, Paul? <laughs> uh, Lee Whitnall said, Haha, loved Mark's awkward laugh, talking about the Olympian man crushes, nearly wet myself laughing by a milk in spa. Was this the, was this the little Easter egg you tagged on? At the end, I'm trying to remember. What well, I think we talked about it during the show as well. Listen, to be honest, to be completely honest, it could have been a lot worse with the Easter egg at the end. We we the, well, I did. That's one of the things I listened. I actually went to the very end of the show this week before listening to it from the beginning to see what of our conversation <laughs> had actually got in there because. It, at points when Tom Daly and his colleague were arching their backs in the shower and stuff, it all got that a little good bit. Fellow, is it? We just, we just, I think more just admiring the effort that has gone into crafting those physiques and the sacrifice that it took but it did it did take a turn for the Grecian didn't it well Paul Campbell got in touch he said Tom why would we why would Tom Daly distract you women's volleyball distracted me I did hear a bit of a classless joke at work this week about the women's volleyball and I fell for it as well the older guy Chris that sits opposite me in the office says oh, I was watching the uh, I was watching the women's volleyball but there was a wrist injury and I went, all right, what happened? He went, oh, nothing too bad. The doctor says I'll be all right by next week. I thought, oh, Chris. I don't know which is worse, the joke or the fact that I walked straight into it. <laughs> the joke. Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> we were watching a bit of beach volleyball, though, the other night. I haven't watched any of it. And um, just one team, all the others seem to do the normal sort of high-fiving, but the Venezuelan girls, constant ass... Constant ask, not even tapping, cupping. It's all about the ass in that part of the world, though. <laughs> They're very much, it's it's very much what they focus on, I think, right. isn't it? The, the badonk, the donk. Tim Griffiths got in touch. He said, nice to see Jack and Chris follow the Rhinos' example. They know something about falling, do them leads, boys. <laughs> so this obviously is um, the, the synchro three metre divers um, who train in leads. Although I don't think neither of them can well, be actually claimed for Yorkshire's own. One's from Harrogate. No, one, one, one's from. One's from south, down south, and the other was from Harrogate. He's from so. Liverpool, but he lives in Ripon. Right. Well, they they definitely said Harrogate. But he's from. Along with the blonde hair. Yeah, but he's from Liverpool. The one who's diving now for the for the qualifications for the individual. Oh right, okay. But yeah, he's from Liverpool originally. No, right. Well, to be fair, BBC's coverage has at times been pretty. Atrocious, hasn't it? Have you been watching the, the, the litany of John Inverdale failures? Oh, no, because every time his stupid face comes on the TV, oh, absolutely. I turn it off. But you'd enjoy it because he's. Oh, he's there's the interviews with the women after the sevens. He's the front and stuff, yeah. Interviews with the women after the sevens. He tried to um, crowbar. He's fallen out with Steve Redgrave, apparently. He's tried to crowbar um, an interview out of a Kiwi fella that won his race, and it took Redgrave to sort of stop him and make sure that the New Zealand media made yeah. first. He congratulated Andy Murray on being the first person to ever win two Olympic gold medals at tennis and Andy Murray pointed out to him that the Williams sisters both have four Olympic <laughs> gold medals. So, you know, not enjoying on John Inverdale has actually been quite entertaining for the last few days for me. <laughs> I'm sure someone will have a compilation up then. Um, Sarah McKenzie at Scoots 28 Matt, great in touch. I'm not a midwife but I've given birth three times and there's nothing to it. <laughs> 
That wasn't where I expected it to go with this. I thought we were going to get told off for being cup, bars, eh? Cup final is 20 days before Helen's due date, so there's no problem. There you go. Also, the pregnant baby is known as Tish. Yes. Say it out loud. Tissues. Very good. Frank Hughes sounds like a grateful person with a speech impediment. Frank Hughes. It's very funny. That's uh, one of the that's one of the best tweets I've read for a long time. To get, the show. Just get a pun into your kids' names. That's what we want to see. Absolutely. That's what we want to see. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's keep encouraging that for a moment. That would be too cute, though, wouldn't it? Frank Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Someone's never been accused of being cute. Frank Moore. <laughs> Uh, Matt says, uh, who would win in a matchup between the NRL Newcastle and the League One Newcastle? It's a close run thing at the minute, isn't it? I know one well, of, to one answer of, the question one seriously, of them is in better of form than the other. The NRL Newcastle win, but he makes a very good point. NRL Newcastle are pretty well. How many consecutive defeats is it now for Nathan Brown's men? 16 somewhere in there? They've lost a lot of a games. Lot, they've lost a lot of rugby this year. Yeah. Um, okay, FC hashtag Tough Mudder trademark at Langers38. He's changed his name. Um, maybe he did the Tough Mudder. That's so uh, if, he's, if he's done that recently, well done. Because yes. that's a slog. A few of our friends did that last weekend. Didn't yes, they? they did. Yeah. Um, putting us to shame. Yes, they did. <laughs> so, although one of the friends of ours that did it is my ex-wife and she did she did you know want me to bring our daughter along and, and stand around in a field for six hours while she did it so that she could see her mum do the tough mudder. I politely pointed out that if I was going to take Erin off her hands for the day, we'd probably be spending the day around here and got fun to have kind of a McDonald's <laughs> and then schlep all the way to Skipton to stand in a field. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Witness CEO, uh, this is what he said, Witness CEO makes first Super 8s should start on zero call, waiting on Saints, Wigan, Wolves and FC to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, it seems unlikely, doesn't it? Uh, uh, James Rule wasn't the first, actually, was he? Because Scott Moore had already had his say on it. And yeah, Justin Card has chipped in about it quite eloquently, as you would expect. Uh, and I've obviously done a blog yeah. this week. Um, they put it up on Tuesday or Wednesday. It was my lunchtime meeting today, I really enjoyed it. Uh, there's quite a few comments on there from the listeners as well. I'd encourage people to get on board and have a look at that. So it's at superleapod.blogspot.co.uk. If you track back through our Facebook or Twitter posts, you'll probably find it too. Are we discussing it later in the show? No. Oh, I think we should discuss it at some point. Well, we'll discuss it now then, if you like. Fantastic. No, because I thought it was a really well-written piece. And to give it some overview, it was your current standpoint and opinion on the validity and whether or not we should look at changing how things go in the Super 8s, and also a review of the very, very many different ways in which the winners and relegated teams have been decided just in your lifetime, really, which which was the the first part that I found tremendously interesting, was just the number of, yeah. of and frequency of changes that we've made to the structure of our sport, and then actually the conclusion that you come to, which, which to be honest, is the one I would tend to agree with, which is that at the moment, it doesn't bear changing because it's not had sufficient time to kind of get any traction and what have you. Is that about right as a summary? Yeah, well, basically... There's I'm, obviously much more flesh to these bones. I'm 31 and there's been 12 different league systems, so one for every two and a half years I've been alive, basically. Um, some of them are, were just like teams dropped out late or they fudged around a season, didn't they, to start the... To, summer to era. The so. super, super League era. But basically, yeah... Um, there's been four main types of league structure in that time, which, st- which is ridiculous. Mm. Uh, and people just can't seem to cope with the idea that there's not a perfect structure where every team can win the league every week of every year all the time. Yeah. And let's just get over that um, and try and come up with the best way to make any structure work. Mm. And my view on that is um, it's the inputs that need equalising, not the points and tallies like that and fanning around with us with the actual league structure yeah it's the it's the inputs that we need to focus on to make sure there's an even spread of talent of financial ability of expertise just to make sure that the teams sort of share knowledge of each other work towards things together for one goal rather than all being separate entities because the only way the sport grows the competition becomes more successful look at the nfl as a as a prime example of how this works, is um, the owners to work together for the outcome that's better for the sport rather than just being bothered about themselves, um, I think. So, 
yeah, that's kind of like the, the theme that it flows through to the, the end sort of point. But yeah, check it out, superleaguepod.blogspot.co.uk. Yeah. Let us know your views. Yeah, absolutely. Please do get in touch on that. I, I didn't go into what my preferred league structure is. Are you still sticking with the uh, with the, with the conferences and oh, the conferences yeah. and franchising? I'd, I'd have that. Yeah. 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 I'm... I'm, I'm I tend to agree with you, which doesn't make for a very interesting debate on a podcast, but there you go. Who else have we getting in touch this week, Mark? Uh, okay, the one everyone's been waiting for, I assume.